All right, man, peace. You know, brothers, it's so funny. Late last year, when that whole Harvey Weinstein narrative started to escalate, and of course, it burgeoned into the quote-unquote Me Too movement, and some of these other movements that so many of these females have decided to become a part of. I made a series of videos telling you, brothers, that what Hollywood was going to do was to try to parlay and change over, transition a lot of this energy into many of these films, particularly the action film genre. And you see that all over. And this is a process that has been in the works for many years right now. That's why you'll see the preponderance of films that oftentimes will have a male deity figure being conquered by a female deity figure. And when you watch an action film, for those of us who grew up in the 80s and 90s, we remember action stars like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Mel Gibson and Sylvester Stallone. For the most part, action films have always been very formulaic. And what they are is an extrapolation of many of the ancient myths from Kemet, Babylon, Greece, Assyria, etc. And they just make a little tinker here and there. Most of these screenwriters are very familiar with many of the myths, quote-unquote myths, from ancient Babylon and ancient Kemet, so on and so forth. And they just make them into movies. Well, they've decided to take the onus away from the father god aspect and transition over to the mother goddess aspect because she does have a warrior goddess dynamic that they want to push and promote in these films and they use the me too movement as an excuse to try to turn the action film genre into mostly a female oriented genre and that's what we've seen over the last year or so maybe even going back to two years or so we've seen it with the star wars films the force awakens which was a terrible movie but got great reviews. Why is that? Because the fix was in. And many of the Star Wars nerds, they went to go see A Force Awakens and they allowed themselves to be put under a Jedi mind trick by the mainstream media who told them that the film was good when it wasn't. It took them a whole film to realize what had happened to the Star Wars mythos, which is that they had taken all the prominent male characters and turned them into females. That's all they did. There was no creativity involved in A Force Awakens. All they did was take Star Wars A New Hope, take all the male characters and turn them into female. And they took the one alpha male in the original Star Wars trilogy, that being Han Solo, and killed him off. It's one of the first things that they had to do because his character represented an archetype that had to be ritualistically murdered so that all the energy could go over to the female characters, that being Rey and Leia and that ridiculous female Yoda character that was played by that Kenyan actress Lupita Nyong'o. They had to do that because it was all ritualistic. We're going to see it in the Avengers series where they're going to have Thanos eventually be defeated by Miss Marvel who also represents a mother goddess archetype. Point being is this, why am I saying all this? Because this actress that we see here by the name of Viola Davis and I lightly alluded to her in the video that I did on Denzel Washington agreeing with Chronicles of Judah 144. She represents a lot of what is wrong with the modern day liberal black female. That is that she has such low self-esteem that she tries to blame on others despite the fact that for the most part she has gotten everything that she should want out of life allegedly. But still the one thing that has eluded her is the validation of the white male. Why do I say that? Because she's on record as stating that what Hollywood needs is to depict more relationships between black women and white men. According to her, there's a dearth of scenes depicting romance between black women and white men. Why is she saying all this? Because number one, she has no respect for the black male masculine principle whatsoever. And that's okay. I'm the, <laughs> I don't expect that. That's par for the course. We as so-called black men should not be surprised by that. That's modus operandi for the modern liberal black female. It's simply extremely revelatory and it's something that brothers must pay attention to. Because the more that we pay attention to things, the more that we're able to avoid certain pitfalls. We're all going to make mistakes in life. We're all going to approach stumbling blocks that we're going to trip over. But the more attention that we pay to things, the more we can avoid court, the more we can avoid jail, the more we can avoid prison. Very often, 
these modern day liberal females, they will tell you about themselves way before they expose themselves. It's almost like a warning that they give you unconsciously or subconsciously. The Most High will force them to put forth that warning for you if you pay very close attention. But just once again, going back to the paradigm that we see in many of these films. Remember back in the 80s or 90s, the normal convention in an action movie would be two men and a woman. Why is that? Because that was an allusion to the overall paradigm in the ancient uh, Kemet or Babylonian mystery school system of Asar, Aset, and Haru. Always two men and a woman. We saw that in Lethal Weapon. We've seen that in other films. But now they're trying to change over to promote the woman more. So, of course, Viola Davis is taking this as her cue to try to inject into the paradigm what she's always hoped for, which is that a white man will sweep her off her feet. Once again, this is a married woman. She's married to a so-called black man in real life. So she has no regard for him whatsoever. None. For her to say something like that. But it's part and parcel of this false notion that oftentimes is put forth by the liberal black female that as soon as a prominent black man attains any level of fame that he goes and gets a non-black woman which is an absolute falsehood the vast majority of famous so-called black men are with black women that's a fact and in addition to that is actually quite the contrary it's actually the so-called black woman who once she attains any level of fame starts to throw her vagina around to different races of men and either remains single all her life turns lesbian or tries to get a white man that she can sport around. Those are the facts of the matter. And history proves that out. But once again, this film that is being brought forth from Hollywood called Widows, it depicts a scenario in which you have quite a few women who are married to criminals that are normally involved in bank robberies and other heists. And their quote unquote men, their husbands, are killed in whatever way. And now they have to pay back the the people who they owe money to so this is the the plot convention of the film of course it's not going to do well hollywood is not doing well right now because of of this agenda that they have to promote women as action stars most people have no interest in going to the movies to see women as action stars and outside of the success that we've seen from jennifer lawrence in the hunger game series They've had no success with women as action stars. That's why they've had to take historically successful action franchises like Star Wars or the Marvel films and try to force female heroines on people through franchises that have already established success. So now if you want to go see an Avengers movie, you have to see more women because you want to make sure that you are able to keep up with the continuity of the series. So that's how they know they can, you know, they can inject homosexual themes or lesbian themes or feminazi themes into the Marvel movies because you're already hooked on Marvel. You've seen all the Iron Man, the Captain America. You want to see where the series is going to go. You're going to bring your children. Right. Same thing with the Star Wars movies. You grew up on Luke and Han Solo and Chewbacca and Leia. Now you're taking your children to the movies and now you have to see Ray and all this other nonsense. So they know they can't create. A successful action franchise from the ground up starring women so they're going to do it through already established successful action franchises and they're just going to throw women in roles that were customarily given to men and you're going to be forced to be subjected to having a five foot three hundred and ten pound woman throw around six different guys who are all six foot five and above you know 250 pounds and you're supposed to sit there and believe that that stuff is realistic that's the point, and that's all to promote that energy of the warrior goddess. Now, once again, when we get back to Miss Viola Davis, her her assertion that there's been a dearth of romantic situations between black women and white men in films. That's just not the case. The fact of the matter is that every prominent black actress in Hollywood has always had some type of, of sexual rapport with the Caucasian man on camera, whether it was Kerry Washington, whether it was Holly Berry, whoever you want to name, Nia Long. It's just that what <laughs> what Viola Davis is talking about is the happily ever after dynamic where she gets to be the wife of the Caucasian man. And they get to depict real romance and r that ride or die dynamic 
Um, not the not the one hit a quitter dynamic that we saw from Holly Berry in Monsters Ball. That's what Viola Davis wants, and that's what she's an advocate for. But once again, brothers, you have to wonder, what will be the response from black Twitter and these woke Negroes if Denzel Washington said he was making a film where his female lead was going to be a white woman and that was going to be his wife? And they owed money to a black female mobster because most of the mobsters depicted in this film that Viola Davis is in are black males. At least according to the, the trailer. So what if Denzel Washington had a film where his wife was white and, you know, to build up the movie, he said, you know, we need to have more films where black men have Caucasian female romantic leads. And by the way, the antagonists in the film are all black women. And we have to, you know, we have to find a way to give them their money back. We're going to rob banks and blah, blah, blah. How will so many of these uh, these woke liberal black females react to that? Denzel Washington has been in the entertainment industry for 40 years. How many films has he allowed to depict himself in a romantic situation with a Caucasian woman? I can only think of a couple. In The Bone Collector, at the very end, it was implied that he had developed a romantic rapport with Angelina Jolie. And in the film Flight... It showed him uh, in a semi-romantic situation with a Caucasian female lead. And please keep in mind that in flight, he played an airplane pilot who was also a cokehead and alcoholic. So this, this notion that black men are all over highly weird, um, having these great and prosperous relationships with the Caucasian female while the, while the black female is not, that's just not true. It's not accurate, but... Accuracy has never been something that that women in general, liberal women in particular, and liberal black female even more in particular have ever been concerned with. Accuracy is not something that they care about. But when I saw the article where Viola Davis stated what she stated, I just found it very interesting. Once again, nothing surprises me or shocks me that people say. I don't care what year it is because, you know, people are very fond of listing the year that we're in before they say something silly. It's 2018. You mean to tell me that people still don't know that you can do this, 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 this? Right? People love to say dumb shit like that. They love to give you the year before they say something stupid that they feel like everybody should have accepted by now. The point being is this. You have to be very, very, very wary of what the female that you're associated with adheres to and what she believes. And that's why I always harp on the understanding that the liberal black female is not your friend. This female is 53 years old and she's still swooning over the notion of being able to kiss a Caucasian man on camera when she is married. When she's married. Okay? So it's just something for you to be aware of. And once again, in the, she plays the ringleader to a group of women of various races who have to pull off a heist to offset a debt that they've inherited from their husbands. So, who is Viola Davis truly meant to embody? She's truly meant to embody the leader of women. That's why I always tell you, brothers, the liberal black female, her number one altar is feminism. It's not racialism. Liberal black females consider themselves their own race. Okay? That's the bottom line to that. Am I talking about every woman? No. But when it comes to the liberal black woman, that's what they consider themselves. They consider themselves their own race. They do not consider themselves to be associated with the so-called black man in any way other than the superficial. And that's the bottom line to that. But just be very aware of it. I just, <laughs> I saw the article. Brother sent me the article on what Viola Davis said. And I found it very, very entertaining. Once again, it wasn't surprising. It wasn't shocking. It was just entertaining. Because when we look back in the annals of Hollyweird, especially in the last 25 years, basically every prominent female actress, Tandy Newton, Holly Berry, Nia Long, Viola Davis, Angela Bassett, they've all been depicted um, in an amorous relationship dynamic with a Caucasian man. While when we look at the so-called black man, whether it's been um, Eddie Murphy or Denzel Washington or Will Smith, uh, Don Cheadle, or whoever 99 out of 100 times that you see them in a movie 
their wife is a black woman. 99 times out of 100. And to take it even further, 99 times out of 100, most of these black females in the entertainment industry got their start or were allowed to stay above water in tough times by going to black directors like Tyler Perry and Spike Lee or whoever to give them jobs when they couldn't get a job. But that shows you how quick they will bite the hand that feeds them when they can get the Caucasian man to give them a look. All right. That's why you have to put your trust in the most high. You have to look upward. You cannot look downward. So peace.